Columbus. W F M U. 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 On Tuesday, that means it's time for the best show on WFMU. 120 minutes worth of mirth, music, and mayhem, hosted by the one and only Tom Sharpling. The best show on WFMU broadcasts each and every Tuesday night from the 24th floor of the WFMU broadcast building, overlooking beautiful downtown Jersey City, New Jersey. As always, the phone number is 201-200-WFMU. So call now. But please, refrain from dialing unless you've got something to say. My name is Ali Farinaki, and as always, thanks for listening. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Like the pizza box says, you've tried the rest, now try the best. Take it away, Tommy!
hugging you as you slip in The subconscious train of thought Such a shame at such a cost
right, you are listening to the best show on WFMU each and every Tuesday night from 9 until 11. My name is Tom Sharpling, and I'm here with you tonight until 11 o'clock. The phone number, as always, 201 200 9368. The email address, Tom S. T. O. M. S. at WFMU.org. We are live with the email, so if you send it through, I can see it within seconds of you sending it off. We heard from the White Stripes from their second album, Distigil, on the Sympathy label, Death Letter, the name of the song. I was never interested in the White Stripes until I read the article in uh, Entertainment Weekly this weekend, telling me that garage music is popular. So I figured I'd check some of it out, and it turns out I like it. So, I'm just going to say goodbye to all that other stuff I used to listen to and get into this whole garage rock movement. Ah, oh, before that, from a compilation called A Lethal Dose of Hard Psych, we heard the Aardvarks with Subconscious Train of Thought. One of the three CDs put out by the Arf Arf label in the Lethal Dose series. There was a Lethal Dose of Hard Psych, a Lethal Dose of Light Psych, and a Lethal Dose of Heavy Psych. Oh, before that. The Crystallized Movements from the Mind Disaster album, their first record back in 1983, Communal Storybook. Now, a lot of people, when they want to listen to Mind Disaster, they'll play the CD reissue. I only play the original vinyl in the edition of 200 valued at about four hundred and fifty dollars and starting us off dead meadow from their self-titled album sleepy silver door and that is on the tolada record label out of arlington virginia hey everybody thanks for coming out to the uh if you were one of the 3,300 customers or one of the hundreds of volunteers that participated in our spring record fair, thank you for coming out and making it such a whopping success. If you missed out on the party, and it was a party, the next fair is going to be November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th at the Metropolitan Pavilion once again. If you need information on record fairs, not just record fairs, our record fairs, we can't tell you about record fairs that take place at you know, Somerville. We can tell you about the WFMU record fair though. Contact Mike at 201-521-1416 extension 243 or email him at mike at wfmu.org and when you email or call mike ask him about his blue folder
some other news of note. This Thursday, on the Cherry Blossom Clinic with Terry T. Tune in between 3 and 6 p.m. to hear Super Chunk live on her show. A rare acoustic set. Recorded at the vaunted Museum of Television and Radio in New York City and archived for posterity until the end of time. So you can go to the Museum of Television and Radio and if you ask them to, that you want to hear some old Fred Allen radio shows, they'll go find them for you. You want to hear Fibber McGee and Molly, they'll find that. If you want to hear some episodes of The Shadow, they can find that. And now, if you mention Super Chunk, they can find that too. That is the Cherry Blossom Clinic with Terry T. This Thursday, May 10th, between 3 and 6 p.m. The phone number, 201-200-9368. I should make mention, I do have a guest coming up later in the program, Giles Palermo, who is a record dealer, or not a record, I guess like a record uh, aficionado, who is in town, I believe, for the record fair. He's going to come on and, uh, and play us some things from his collection, and that's later in the program. Oh, what do I have here? I got something to give away. I'm actually going to give something away. We've got tickets. Maybe I'll give a ticket away or something to the first person who can call 201 200 9368. That's 200 WFMU. 201 200 WFMU. And tell me. What's different about the show tonight? FMU, you're on the air. Yeah, I'm calling because I heard you're giving away tickets to something, but I don't know what. Are you really that desperate for tickets? You'll just call? Consider me an opportunist. You're an opportunist. You're, you're crass. Yeah, I know that listening to FMU, whatever you're giving away is probably something I'm going to like. Really? Did you go to the record fair this weekend? I actually did, and scored some really cool uh, uh, old psych. Did you have fun? I had a lot of fun. I was glad I could buy beers there, too. How many beers did you buy at the record fair? Um, two. Two beers. Did you buy any pizza? No, no pizza. Too unhealthy. I'm thinking of a number between one and ten. What is it? Seven. Wrong. Okay. The first person who can guess. What's different about the show tonight? You have a cold. WFMU, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, hi. Hi. Hi, yeah, it sounds like you have a cold. You're absolutely right. Oh, I hope you get better soon. No, you don't. <laughs> you really don't care. Oh, well. You just want free tickets, <laughs> right? I, w I would like the tickets, yes. What well, are they what? for? I'm not giving any tickets away. Oh. I just changed my mind. Oh. I just had to say something to get people to call up. <laughs> That's funny. Did you go to the record fair? I did. I even talked to you at the record fair. Really? Yeah, I'm Robin. I was at the WFMU uh, LP table. Oh, hi. How are you, Robin? I'm doing okay. Robin. I'm trying to remember. Robin. I was wearing a pink sweater, I was selling records, hanging out with Gaylord and his wife. Huh. You were eating sushi. Oh, you that's right. You the soy sauce. Okay, all right, that's right. <laughs> well, thank you, Rob. Oh, unfortunately, Robin, you are disqualified. 
Oh, because from receiving tickets here? because you are connected to the station. Oh, I didn't realize. Unfortunately, that's the truth. Ah, what a drag. I'm just kidding. I'm not giving oh. away tickets. Oh, no. well, so there's nothing to win or lose anyway. I don't, just, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, well, thank you for calling. Okay, on. well, get Thank you soon. for volunteering. Hey, no problem. Okay. Catch All you right. later. Okay, bye. FMU, you're on the air. Yeah, what's up? Just listen to L from Newark. Listener, like L. Listener L. Yeah. Just the letter L. No, L as in E L. E L. Okay. Yeah. How are you I'm tonight? Chilling, man. Chilling. You chilling? Yeah. Listening to your show. Nice. I'm gonna say the same thing. That's that's what the difference was your voice. You know what I mean? That I have a cold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's, uh, maybe you, you poisoned yourself from eating that raw fish, you know what I mean? Was it vegetarian sushi or was it raw fish? It was raw fish. That's what it was. That's uh, not what it was. Food poisoning. Yeah, that, that, that's what gave me a cold, eating raw yeah. fish. Because that, that happens so often. People hey, are, get... you, are you still wrapping up from two weeks ago? I want to add a name to that list for, uh, for what? creative artists. For overrated artists? Yeah. Okay, who do you want to add? Put, put Janet Jackson on that list. Janet Jackson on the yeah. list of overrated artists. Who's yeah. overrating Janet Jackson, though? Man, it's... I mean, she's everywhere, all over the place. Come I mean, on, Al. Ubiquitous. Get your head in the game, Al. <laughs> You're off base. I'm serious, man. Put her in the same bag. Just because same, somebody is overexposed bottle. doesn't mean they're overrated. yeah. Overrated too, you know. She's mediocre talent, but uh, <clears throat> you know, I guess she got the right look and uh, the right dance moves. You know what I mean? So she's from a famous family. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, you can put in the same bag as uh, Spears, Bono, Sting, BB uh, King. All right. All the cats. You know what I mean? It has been recorded. L hates Janet Jackson. No, I don't hate her, man. I just think she's overexposed. You know what I mean? Well, she's you got know, a new album out. It's pure pop, yeah. It's the publicity machine. Oh, yeah. They always oh, yeah. roll it out. Yeah. I'm in my truck right now. I've got to head up the sea caucus. I Honk your horn. Seen. Honk your horn. Honk it again. Air horn's not working. Honk. Hold it down. Just hold it down consistently, though. Did you hear that? Did somebody actually just yell at you? Yeah, man. I just heard somebody yell, hey. Something like redneck out in Elizabeth here, man. Drive your truck. Mark. Weave your truck from lane to lane. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm actually parked right now. Where are I'm you parked? I had to pull over to call the station, you know what I okay. mean? Okay. Because, uh, you know, I didn't want to talk while driving. You know, that's seeing danger sound. And, uh... You know, if the fuzz sees me talking and driving, you know, I get a citation. The fuzz? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm right here in Elizabeth, right next to the airport. So. Nice. All right, man, I'll uh, continue listening to the show. I'll let you take some more callers. All right, Al. All right, take it easy. Okay. That was Al checking in. And our final call of the segment will be this person. WFMU, you're on the air. Well, thank you for... Ending this segment on such a winning note by hanging up on me. Later in the program, Giles Palermo is going to be in studio playing things from his renowned record collection. I'd like to play something, though, from a band called Thane Russell and Three. And as Hova says, it goes a little something like this.
not flexing his mind, doing it right, keeping me tight, taking a bite out of the peach tonight. Being us so tight, deer in the headlight, rocking me all night, flexing his mind, doing it right, keeping me tight, taking a bite out of the peach tonight. Sit on my suspicion, let's see if my intuition has any volition Cause I'm on a mission for the emission Competition and the definition of my position It's bitchin', it's bitchin', it's bitchin', it's bitchin' Consider my suspicion, let's see if my intuition has any volition Cause I'm on a mission for the emission Competition and the definition of my position It's bitchin', it's bitchin', it's bitchin', it's bitchin' Only double A, thinking triple X Only double A Thinking triple X, only double A. Thinking triple X, only double A, but uh. Tight, deer in the headlight, rocking me all night, flexing his mind, doing it right, keeping me tight, taking a bite out of the peach tonight. Innocent type, deer in the headlight, rocking me all night, flexing his mind, doing it right, keeping me tight, taking a bite out of the peach tonight. Only double A, thinking triple X. Only double A, but I'm thinking triple X. Only double A, thinking triple X. Only double A, but uh... Excuse me, Bella. Excuse me, Bella. Some people say that I keep myself respected and in my cervix next. I'm hex, I'm vex, I'm in the devil's neck. Some people say that I keep myself respected and in my cervix. Only double A, thinking triple X. Only double A, but I'm thinking triple X. Only double A, thinking triple X. Only double A, but uh. Nobody here can tell me they don't want to sucky, sucky. Only double A, thinking triple X. Only double A, thinking triple X. Only double A, thinking triple X. Only double A, but uh. Come on. Excuse me, but uh. Excuse me, but uh. Triple X double Triple X double Triple X double
You're listening to the best show on WFMU. And this show can only be heard on the airwaves of WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope, worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. We just heard from the Rondells. Stuff taken from the Teen Beat Sampler 2001, which is uh, an annual occurrence for Teen Beat. Pay no more than six dollars, it says. And there's all that other Teen Beat garbage that you're used to. Peaches and Gonzalez. Before that. From their live session here on WFMU. Double A, Triple X. Back in October on uh, Scott Williams' program. Which can be heard on Fridays from 3 to 6 p.m. I saw Peaches and Gonzalez live at... uh, the knitting factory over the weekend and it was sheer pandemonium I would also have to say for the record that uh, Gonzalez is one of the most hyper untalented people walking the planet and uh, I guess that's part of the appeal but It literally felt just like some alternate universe where people applaud the truly talentless guy. And everything that he does, the worse he gets, the more applause he receives in in, uh, return. He thinks he's Sammy Davis Jr. You're not, Chili. Chili Gonzalez. Ah, before that, the Magic Pacer by request. Going out to my uh, good buddy, who I ran into at the uh, record fair. I cannot remember who you are. I'm sorry, sir. Your name escapes me at the moment, but I remembered to play your request. Alien Communication. From the Magic Pacer album, White Room on the Wind. Record label, the Mooney Suzuki, before that, from their 1999 EP, self-titled, we heard My Dear Persephone, and you can go to themooneysuzuki.com for more information, and starting us off, Thane Russell and Three. With security from the uh, English Freak Beat Volume 4 compilation put out by the Archive International Productions label. Documenting all that hot English Freak Beat. My name is Tom Sharpling and I'm here with you until 11. This is the best show on WFMU. I do have a little bit of a cold, and uh, we'll get through that. But the most pressing matter at hand, uh, my guest is in studio, Giles Palermo. Hello, Tom. Oh, sorry about that, sir. Let me pot you up here. Hello, okay. Tom. How are you tonight? Let's just check this. I'm sorry, but how's that? Let's Hello, Tom. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming down, Giles. No problem. No problem at all. Uh, how have you... You came in... Uh, you came into town, I guess, for the record fair? Is that what brought you... Uh, That's in- correct, yes. And uh, I am a collector of extremely rare records. That's what uh, I've heard. You, you're, you're kind of renowned for, uh, for, for, having one of the, for having a pretty outstanding record collection. I I do have what I believe to be a collection of the rarest records in the United States. Really? 
Yes. You've brought some things with you. You were kind enough to uh, bring them with you, and you uh, you were obviously you were operating the uh, the equipment tonight. As far as that goes, yeah, I guess you want to. Yeah, I really would rather you not touch these records, Tom. Okay, I okay. I I that's just how I am about these things. You know, there's no telling what could happen, and they are so extremely rare that I I must I must cue them up and play them. Okay, that's that's fine by me. But uh, so so you uh, what what? How did you get into record collecting? Like what 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 got you started? Well, it's I've been doing it for some time. I've 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 ordered a lot of records from overseas. Uh, that's how I've gotten some of my more rare items. I used to order a lot of records from Europe. But I ceased to do that recently for fear of contracting hoof and mouth disease. From a record? Well, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's possible to, to get a... I you can that... never be too careful. Okay. Okay. But... So now if I'm going to order a record from overseas, it's, it's usually from Japan or Australia or maybe the Caribbean. Okay, so so uh, so you're right. What what makes your collection? Well, why don't we just hear? Do you have something you want to? Uh, sure. Why don't I, we get right into it? I mean, because I know that's what people are going to be interested in. I should say, my guest Giles Palermo is a uh, renowned record collector who uh, was in town and was kind enough to stop up at the FMU studios to uh, to let us hear some of his. Uh, I guess some of the what are these the these the better pieces from your collection or what I did bring some gems. I did bring some top drawer items from my collection, yes. Uh, some things that I I think that are really going to wow the wow listener land. And I'm also here to to debunk some rumors and to and to state a lot of misconceptions about particular artists. And I guess that kind of we can lead into the first artist that I'm going to play here. Okay. One misconception about uh, musical artists is that, uh, well, is that if they are also actors in the world of cinema, that they they can't they can't they can't trans transfer that talent to the musical medium. Okay. Which, which I believe to be completely untrue. I, I believe since they're already, they're already seasoned veterans in the world of, of cinema, switching to music should just be like changing a pair of socks. And I believe that that's apparent in most cases. I believe that most actors and actresses, when they decide to make music, it is, it is some of the most amazing music made. Okay. Well, And I, I have an example of that here. And also... This uh, what we're about to hear is is an actor. He starred in uh, he starred in 1990s NASCAR time travel adventure movie, which is an excellent film, by the way. It's called Free Jack. Uh huh. And his name is Mick Jagger. And well, of course, another misconception people have is that. There are Rolling Stones records that are that are hard to find, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's that's completely untrue. I, I you can walk into you can walk into any convenience store and find a copy of their their Satanic Majesty's Request with the 3D cover. Really? Yes. But what I've brought is an extremely rare 12 inch from 1987. Okay called Let's Work, and I also believe that it, it is the pinnacle of this man's career. I, I think that he, you know, you can have all of that late 60s, early 70s Stones stuff, and I, I, I generally prefer what we're about to hear, so let's let's go ahead and put it on. Okay, well, I guess you just, uh, you just... Let me to... get over there, let me, oh, let me... Okay, and it just, uh... All right. Okay. You just pot up uh, a thing.
the world don't owe you No, it's not that in a rut I want to show you Don't waste your energy On making enemies Just take a deep breath And work your way on Let's work Be proud Stand tall Touch the flow Man and woman Be free Let's work Kill party Okay, so that's uh, that was Let's Work by Mick Jagger. Yes. Okay. Actor and musician. Mm -hmm. Now, what what would make that record actually stand out as being, you know, something? I mean, it's it's from my personal opinion, it's not uh, it's not the high water mark of his career, but uh, I mean, I guess that's up for debate. You know, that's that's a matter of right. Taste. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't speak for others' taste. Mm -hmm. I, I do find it to be the high water mark. Okay, it, I, but it's just it has a, a a modern feel to it. It's it's I think it's way ahead of its time, and it just uh, it moves me to no end. Okay, but the other uh, thing that would come up would be the the fact that it's. Uh... That what would make that stand out is something that would be like a, a part of a great record collection. I mean, it's it's kind of a pretty pretty common uh, common how how is it common? In I mean, the fact that it would be like a uh, you know, like a dollar record or you know I mean nothing special that anybody couldn't uh, get their hands on. I would assume I can't. Uh... I can't agree with that. I, I I ordered that from Japan two years ago, for an astronomical sum of money. Huh. Well, I mean, I I that's surprising to me because I would think that something like, uh, you know, like a Let's Work, you'd be able to just get your hands on because it's, I mean, the world didn't exactly uh, you know roll over and die for the Mick Jagger uh, solo career. So you think the stuff might just be kind of? Oh, I'd say maybe a maybe part of the world didn't roll over and die for his career. Those of us who have very discriminating taste actually would 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 see that differently. Actually, just we're we're amazed by this this particular period in his career. Okay, and uh, but what makes that a great? record is the modern the fact that it sounded modern is that what you said well of course yes right? it sounds very modern it's mm -hmm. very ahead of its time that sound that record sounds nothing like like anything that came out in the year 1987 okay I mean I, I again I think that could be disputed I mean it doesn't I mean it just sounds like kind of like a like a rock record I mean it's you know with it's kind of like some pop stuff on it but you know that again that's neither here nor there you you actually are the the expert and i should say we are joined by uh tonight uh giles palermo who is a uh pretty renowned uh record collector is uh in town and uh came in for the record fair and uh 
was kind enough to come up to WFMU and uh, let us hear some of his collection. Now, that actually brings to to mind a good question, is is how uh, the, the, the fact that you are renowned, in, in what, I mean, I've, I've heard your name, but in what ways are, are you, uh, like, I mean, ha, where on the spectrum of record collectors do you fall into? You know? Well, I'm not sure. I, it's kind of in my world, it's like me and then other record collectors. Okay. So I, I have been interviewed by Memphis's very own weekly paper, which is called Local Occurrences. Okay. I was also interviewed on a morning television show that we have in town. A lot of towns have a uh, a radio show that is a morning zoo type mm -hmm. show. Sure. That's very wacky and, and full of comedy and, and supposedly to assist you on your drive to work every day. Uh -huh. uh, we have a television version of that called Tony and Joe Poppycock's Wake Up with Wafter. Okay, and that's that's like a a morning zoo type, but show. on television, but and, on, but on tel okay. right? And I I played a lot of my rare records on that show. It was it was somewhat like this situation, except now there aren't extremely bright lights shining directly in my face. Okay. So uh, I I think that the credit I, I think that the examples of credibility are there. Okay, I guess you, uh, now you are from that area of the country, Memphis? I am from Memphis, okay. Tennessee, yes. Okay. Later we'll be playing uh, some some examples of, of course, Memphis is known for its musical heritage. Mm -hmm. Later on, I, I've brought some extremely rare records that have come out of Memphis. Well, that should be, that should be a treat, and uh, so we'll do that later. But what, uh... What what would do what do you have for us next? Well, there's been a a huge reissue frenzy regarding the Beach Boys and Brian Wilson uh -huh. over the past five to ten years. It has been extremely extremely popular uh, reissue. You know, revitalist, holy grail fodder. This, this late 60s period of the Beach Boys, as you probably know, as the listeners probably know. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's, uh... Well, I have here an unreleased outtake from the Smiley Smile Sessions. Okay. Uh, it, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I may be one of, I may be one of, one of a hundred people that own this. Okay. It, it is truly amazing. It, it, it is it is amazing stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this on right now. These are extremely rare, never before released. These weren't released on any of the the reissues that have occurred from this uh, from this the smile and smiley smile sessions and or records. And I'm going to cue this up right now. Great. Let's hear it. Okay. Let's. Oh, let me get over there and get this going. All right. Life is very complex, filled with joy and pain. Like a fire burning out of control, or a spirit that captures the soul. Life is for the living, the rich, and the poor. And the one is a stranger. Just a friend you have never met before. Our lives are very uncertain, filled with many insecurities. But love is the uplifter, and it is the heart that sets us free. So when the heart is broken, and you don't know. Remember, 
Like an eagle of the mountains For the sweet smell of the day For when the heart is open All the living Is with you But those words he's gone to me will never be set free. Life is for the living and those who want to be. Love is an open book, helping your brain go. Like an eagle of the mountains, or a sweet smell of the rain, or when the heart is open. All right. Yeah, that was uh, that was a rare outtake from the uh, Smiley Smile sessions. Obviously, Brian Wilson's distinct vocals there. And that 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 was actually the Beach Boys. I mean, because that that really didn't sound like. Uh... Any of the, the that was the familiar with. that that was yes the Beach Boys, and that was from the Smiley Smile sessions. That was from the Smiley Smile sessions. Yes, it was called Frolicking Hijinks. Okay, and that's so that is that that is that one of the more uh, like 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 one of the centerpieces of your collection, something like that. Is oh, that... I, I I I it's hard to gauge. It uh, maybe what we have coming up next here is a little more. It's 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 more of a uh, pop cultural occurrence of sorts. Okay. And a lot of people, uh, of course, you're familiar with the fact that uh, Sid Barrett became a self-imposed recluse in the early '70s. Yeah, absolutely. Ceased to make music. Mm -hmm. A lot of, uh, a lot of. I mean, there there are people out there who, you know, I'm sure that they claim and are always pining for the entirety of his output. Yeah. And and also an, a little known fact about Sid Barrett was that he was a huge Bob Dylan fan. Okay, I, I didn't know that. Right, he was a, a an immense Bob Dylan fan. He really was. And in 1983. Uh, he was coaxed out of his, you know, self-imposed reclusion by none other than Bob Dylan. And I think that probably Bob Dylan would be the only person that could do this type of thing. And they collaborated together on Dylan's own All Along the Watchtower. Really? So you're actually saying that Dylan teamed up with... Sid Barrett? That's correct. And what year would that have been? 1983. Wow. That's that's the first time I've ever heard of that. Ever. I've never heard of that, you know, just even rumors of that. Well, that just proves the, the lofty nature of the records that I've brought up here tonight. Okay. And uh, I should say my guest is Giles Palermo, who is a re pretty renowned record collector and... Uh, came in town for the FMU Record Fair and uh, is up here sharing his collection with us tonight. And uh, how, how did you like the Record Fair, I should ask? Oh, well, you know. I mean, did you find things that you, uh, you know? Beat? I bought, I honestly bought one record. I just bought one record. I, I was I was very un uh, underwhelmed. I mean, it, it comp compared, to the, compared to the records that I own at home, uh huh. It it's like I was I was thumbing through a gargantuan j dollar bin. Really? You, of, you of, mean, of 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 bad late seventies AOR is how that felt to me. Just, there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of dealers there that are pretty pretty heavy hitters with uh, rare records. That's that's pretty surprising that you'd be uh, again comparable to. To the records that I own, it 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 was, 
it was it was just next to nil. Really, that 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 is truly shocking to me. But uh, Giles, uh, would you be willing to take phone calls if anybody had any questions about uh, you know your collection or? Well, certainly, yeah. We should probably hear the Sid Barrett track first. Okay, absolutely. And this is Sid on vocals. Okay. And Bob Dylan on guitar from 1983. Okay, well, when you're ready, we'll... Uh... Okay, let me get this going here. Man, they drink my wine, plow man dig my earth. None of them are all the line, know what it's worth. They don't know. There are many here among us who feel that life is but a joke. But you and I, we've been through that. And this is not our fate. So let us not talk falsely now. So that was that was actually Sid Barrett. Yes, it was. And that was from what you said, eighty three. Nineteen eighty three, with Bob Dylan on guitar. That sounds absolutely nothing like anything I've ever heard Sid Barrett uh, do, either you know solo or with Pink Floyd. It's not even near. Well, that's the beauty of my record collection is that I I, I have. Part of the reason these records are so rare is they're they're also very uncharacteristic. Okay, and the uh, I should say we are joined by Giles Palermo, a uh, renowned record collector who is in town uh, and has stopped up to play uh, some some uh, pretty spectacular pieces from his collection. Uh, the phone number is two zero one two hundred nine three six eight. If uh, you have any questions, uh, I'm. I mean, I'm just, where I'm just shocked that that that's that that is actually Sid Barrett. I just can't get past that. It is. I mean, it, it is. Just, it. It is Sid Barrett. I I, I am I am playing a a white label record. Uh, you know it. Well, you see, Tom. This is a white label edition, uh -huh. and when when an artist has has put some music onto a digital format or, or an analog format and wishes to have it uh, made into a record at a, at a pressing plant, they, they get these things back called test pressings. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of test 
Test pressings. I know what that is. And this is a test pressing. Okay. So this was this was possibly uh, a test pressing gearing up for what? For a, a, a full-on release that didn't get released? or uh, Actually, this was released. That was actually released? Yes, it was. How, uh, what, uh, in what, uh, I mean, what is a 12-inch or a, an album? or uh, That was a full-length album called Inoffensive Boogie. You mean Sid, there was a Sid Barrett album in the 80s called Inoffensive Boogie? That's correct. Well, that's that's completely news to me. I actually have a call coming in. Okay, great. WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, this is Al. Uh, are you sure this guy is not putting you on? Put, putting I'm, putting you on? I, I'm pretty sure he's not. The, I mean, he's got the records here. Do you think he's legitimate? I, as far as I know, and I've read about this guy for years now. Yeah, and I've I've heard his name. Uh, you know, when you hear people talk about certain collectors, I've heard his name come up. Sir, the only thing I'm putting on is some really amazing records. Something something tells me that you know you're not quite quite legitimate. Huh. Not quite legitimate. Tell me. Let me ask you a question, a hard one. Okay. Sure. You say you're from Memphis, right? That's correct. Okay. What state is Memphis? What state is Memphis in? Memphis, in? Memphis is in Tennessee. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good answer. So that's actually, I, w I would say that that doesn't qualify as a hard question. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't exactly a, 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 a brain teaser. Okay, well, 201-200-9368 is the number. My guest is Giles Palermo. And uh, now about Memphis, I guess uh, Memphis has a pretty... Uh, pretty storied history yes it of, does of, uh, of great music from down uh, down in Tennessee and uh, is that is that something that's a special part of your collection you were you were alluding to that before a, a section of my collection does include some extremely rare Memphis records yes actually the next thing that I have uh, have queued up for you here is 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 you've you've heard of Al Green? I I imagine. Yes, absolutely. I know Al Green. I uh, yep. He's a pretty pretty uh popular. His, you know, he's right. one of the greatest uh I guess soul singers. I can't agree more. And what I have here is an unreleased outtake from the Al Green gets next to you LP. And. I'm going to get this queued up here. Okay. That was uh that was definitely Ray Parker Jr. No, Ray Parker Jr. I'm, I'm familiar with his film work. He was great in Iron Eagle and an officer and a gentleman. Uh -huh. Well, that but, that's uh, 
That's Lewis uh, Gossett Jr. But uh, but that music uh, that was definitely not. Uh, well, well, who is Ray Parker Jr.? I mean, this this Ray Parker Jr. that you claim this that that was Al Green. You can you can tell by his by his singing by his distinctive singing voice that that was that that was Al Green. Who is this Ray Parker Jr. that you you speak of? Well, he was a guy who had some hits in the eighties, and uh, I would actually say that that. Uh, that I know that song. That was, a, I think, a. Well, well, what are some? What what is a hit by this this Ray Parker Jr. Uh, Ghostbusters. He did the song Ghostbusters. Phil Collins did the song Ghostbusters. No, Ray Ray Parker Jr. definitely did the song Ghostbusters. Well, the, well, regardless, we seem to be a bit off the subject, but the, that was Al Green. I. Uh, 201-200-9368 is the number. Uh, my guest is Giles Palermo. He's in uh, studio. He's a renowned record collector, and he's sharing his collection with us. If you have any questions for him, uh, that yeah, that was definitely Ray Parker Jr. And uh, well, I I, I I tend to disagree. I can't. I don't. I don't. I again, a, a white label test pressing. Mm -hmm. So now, now with Memphis, uh, I guess Al Green is from Memphis. Another great uh, artist from Memphis that I uh, I'm a fan of is, is Isaac Hayes. Isaac Hayes. Uh huh. I'm not so sure that uh, that rings a rings a bell. Um. Yeah. Well, he uh, he did the theme from Shaft and. Uh, He's done some. He's you know he's a pretty popular uh, R and B guy. I guess, I guess he does some voiceover work now. Oh, is he, is he the guy that makes all of the funny noises for the Police Academy movies? No, no, he's not him. That's uh, that's uh, Mike Michael Winslow is his name, but that's not uh, Isaac Hayes. Is a, is actually a? Uh, I'm shot. You don't know who Isaac Hayes is? I. I, I really I don't I I, I, I and you're I, from Memphis that's correct and you because that's uh see that's truly shocking to me because he's uh I would think that even if I, I'm not from Memphis and I know who Isaac Hayes is and uh, I, I'm, I'm surprised you don't know who he is well have you ever heard the theme from shaft no Okay, um, I, I, I do have what I what I, I I think is very very indicative of the Memphis sound, though. Okay. Uh, what 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 if 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 you were to hear this, the, probably the only city in the United States that you would think of would be Memphis. All right. Recorded by, actually, uh, going back to what I said towards the beginning of the show that actors and actresses always make the greatest music mm -hmm. they transfer from medium to medium with 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 just unmatchable grace and what i have here is 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 what i mean i think of memphis when i hear th this music i i think of memphis i think of i think of soul food when i hear what we're about to hear and it just it just reminds me of home I, i'm getting a bit homesick thinking about it right now Okay. Well, so I'm going to cue this up right now. This is Sybil Shepherd. Uh, that's the the one from uh, the show Sybil, and I guess Moonlighting. That's correct. And she is a Memphis native. This is her a track from her 1979 release, Vanilla. So let me get this going here. Um. Marvelous, you should care for me. Softly nice, it's paradise. It's what I 
can't blame me for feeling amorous. So it's wonderful, it's marvelous that you should care for me. That's Sybil Shepherd. That is Sybil Shepherd. I, I can just, oh Tom, I, I can, I can almost taste the soul. I feel like I'm in Memphis. I feel like I'm eating some barbecue baked beans out of my bare hand. I just, I, I can just, just feel it with that with that track. And uh, I mean that, the fact that Sybil Shepherd to to you is more. Uh, indicative of of like soul then then and you don't know who isaac hayes is that's not i mean that's troubling to me but i i'm i'm sorry it's it's you know it's uh i don't know what to tell you it's it's taste is relative taste is relative but there's also something to be said for just knowledge of uh you know the, the, you not knowing who isaac hayes is is kind of surprising 201 200 9368 is the number. My guest is Giles Palermo, who is a uh, renowned record collector who is in uh, in town, who came from the WFMU Record Fair this past weekend. And again, I'm, I'm really shocked that you found the, the record fair to be so, so underwhelming. I... Again, c compared to the records that I already own, mm -hmm. the record fair was like it, it, it was it was the same to me as as walking into a giant room and flipping through m millions of Kansas and Crack the Sky and Boston and Journey records over and over again. Of course, that's not what it was, but the level of records that were at the fair compared to what I actually own, I, I think that that's a, uh, an, an accurate, accurate metaphor. Wow. Well, we got a call coming in here. WFMU, you're on the air. Hello? Hello. Hey, I think this is a big joke. You, you think this is a big joke? I think it's a big joke, definitely. Uh, I've been listening for a while. I'm, I'm putting together the evidence. And you're you're putting together the evidence. Yeah. Well, let me hear it. I'm I'm all for it. I'm. Uh, are you Italian, Giles Palermo from Memphis? I guess Giles Palermo. Actually, am, am I Italian? Yeah. And uh, you don't know who Isaac Hayes is. It just doesn't add up. Well. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters. You see that? Well, what was that supposed to mean? I don't know what that was actually. That must have been your line. Now that's Ray Parker Jr. Right? <laughs> that's Ray Parker Jr. Hey, we just lost him there. Let me... We got another call coming in here, though. Let's... FMU, you're on the air. Hi, um, great show. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm wondering if you could clear up uh, a rumor I've heard, speaking of actors crossing over to music, is that Don Johnson, I heard uh, at one time, released an album. I'm wondering if this is, is that true? Uh, that is true, yes. Really? Yes. What, what year was that about? Uh, was this during Miami Vice, or this was during Miami Vice? Yes, Philip sure. Type, Philip Michael Thomas also released a record. Really? Yes, they both did. How much? How much would something like that go for? Oh, I don't know. They fall so far. They, they, that caliber of record falls so far beneath anything I would ever want to obtain. Really? That's that's correct. Hmm, why? I, I I would think that that would be a, a much sought after item. For 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 you maybe not not for me. 
Okay. Did you attend the record fair this past the weekend, sir? No, I, I had a cold too. I still have one a bit. Okay. Well, thank you very much. All right, thanks. All right. 201 200 9368 is the number. We've got Giles Palermo in studio with us. And uh, I have to say, I find uh, that, that earlier caller, it's vaguely offensive to, to think that there couldn't be somebody who's uh, of, uh, you know, I don't know if you are of Italian uh, background, but what, is there some sort of line where, where people who are Italian uh, don't go below in terms of uh, geography? Oh, like, uh, as far as I mean, just the, the notion, United States? The notion that there can't be a... Uh, An Italian living in Memphis? Yeah. I would, I, I should hope not. I, 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 I haven't, I haven't heard that before. I'm, I'm, there are plenty of, of Italians, Italian Americans living in my hometown. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this is Giles Palermo, who's in studio playing from stuff from his record collection. He's a renowned, uh, collector. Uh, we've got another call coming in, actually. Why don't we take this? WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, how you doing? You, you see, listen, I have to report something. I was listening to the radio the other a week ago on WDHA, and they played an old Pink Floyd like live concert, right? Uh -huh. And then I was I listened to it again this week, and they played the same live concert again, like a, an old good one from like you know say sixty eight or sixty nine or something like that. Uh huh. Do you no. think, like, Sid Barrett is coming back and, like, maybe trying to take over or something like that? Well, maybe. You know, the stuff you played tonight, I'm starting to get worried. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, short and sweet. we got another call coming in here. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, I'm on the air. Yes. Um, I think I think your guest, um, I think the problem is that he just has too many darn records. I mean... If you've got so many records, why do you even bother going to the record fair? Well, actually, I mean, you just sound like you've just, you know, and, and your taste is, no offense, but your taste really stinks. And like, again, really, as, I, as I told Tom earlier, taste is relative. Yeah, but your taste really, like, why even go to a record fair? You could, well, your kind of music, you just buy it any old Sam Goodies. And if you've got so, so many, I mean, how did you amass all these records? No, I, I never, I never claimed that I have a, a huge amount of records. Well, that's My, actually a good question. Well, give us a number. Give, give, can you give us a mm -hmm. ballpark number? How many records do I own? Yeah, about, you know, a ballpark. Oh, about three hundred and fifty. That's it. That I, mean, I, I have. That's more not than really that. a lot. <laughs> but they're all, they're all top notch. They're all top drawer. I have some of the rarest records in the country. I mean, you're, you're dissing the record fair, but I found some great... I thought the record fair was absolutely fantastic. I think it's the best one I've ever been to. Well, again, I it, it was to me, it was like it was like flipping flipping through the world's largest dollar bin. Now, now in that's actually a really good point. In Memphis, or is is just the is the the marketplace just so much different than it is up here? For yeah, people, records? You know, there was people from Memphis at this record fair. You know that? I met a few people that were from, like, the South who came all the way up here to go to this record fair. So your point is moot. Uh, how is my point mute that people because try... people from Tennessee, and you even went from Tennessee to here, so your point <laughs> is moot. Well, I, I went on the assumption that I would find some very rare records, which did not happen. Well, so... But in Memphis, if this was just, like, a dollar bin... Is it so much different down there? Actually, as I said before, Tom, I I order a lot of my records from overseas. Mm -hmm. So actually going out and buying the records in Memphis, that, that doesn't happen that often. Okay, okay. Um, well, why don't we hear something uh, from your collection again? Okay, well, actually, since we were on the subject of the FME Record Fair, I, I, I did find one record there. Okay. And it probably has something to do with the fact that the French pop revitalist movement swept through this area at uh, 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 you know, an alarming degree yeah. about five 
years ago, still is. Absolutely. And I did find an extremely rare record in that genre. This is a uh, release by uh, Serge Gainsbourg, who I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with. Yes, he's the, uh, I guess, the godfather of all that French stuff. Yes, that's correct. This is a record that he released in 1979. So there's about uh, 93 of these in existence. Really? That's correct. They made that few copies? That's correct. Wow. It's sort of a comeback for him. Was a little bit uh, late in his career, but it is unmistakably Im Serge Gainsbourg. Well, it's, I'd love to hear it. Okay, let me get this on here. That is Serge Gainsbourg? That's correct. He had, at that point in his career, Americanized his sound just slightly. Not not too noticeably. I'm sure I've heard that record on, like, Top 40 when I was growing up. Uh, I certainly did not. I, I don't know what Top 40 station that you were listening to. Well, I, you, and you... Um, um, can I see the record? N no. The, I, I'd really rather you not touch the record. I won't touch it. Can I just look at the record? I, I, I can't let you do that. I, well, it's a, it's a test pressing. It's a, it's a white label. Okay. All right. I, I'm just puzzled. I know I heard that before. Well, I can't really. I See, I'm putting it back in its sleeve right now. I can't really. I, I, I'm, I'm even... Even it even makes me nervous to have it exposed to the air too much. Really, that's correct. My guest Giles Palermo, uh, one of the premier uh, record collectors, uh, I guess in the country. He's uh, up from Memphis, came up uh, here uh, to check out the record fair, and he's playing his records for us. Two zero one two hundred nine three six eight is the number. If you've got any questions or comments for uh, Giles, we're in the. Uh, home stretch of the program here so uh is there anything that's literally just like a real like a real centerpiece to your collection we could end on a high note uh, i of course yes i have saved the best for last a common misconception and something that i am up here to do tonight is debunk rumors state misconceptions is the captain beefheart stopped recording music in 1982 and that is actually untrue. Really? Yes. Well, that's actually a bombshell. I. It's. It is true. He. Stu he. He has. Did release one album in 1988. And I have it. There are so very few copies. 
and I'd like uh, I'd like for the public to hear it. I think it's something the public should hear because I think that so many people are, you know, under you know they they assume that the that Beefheart stopped recording in '82. That there's nothing that exists after '82, and I'm here right now to disprove that. I would so, love to hear this. this okay, awesome. let me get this going. That's definitely not uh, Captain Beefheart. I I must say that it is. When, I when did that? When was that recorded? Nineteen eighty-eight. Because that's Joe Conker. T- I think it's that from, is that's that is that is Captain Beefheart. Joe I, Joe Cocker. I, I don't understand who is Joe Cocker. Was he a? He was maybe a stand-up comedian. Wasn't wasn't he? In that uh, movie, Johnny Dangerously, was that was that Joe Cocker? Uh, that's Joe Piscopo, but you know, um, you actually a lot of people would have loved to hear something that uh, that Captain Beefheart recorded after his uh, well, they just did retirement. Well, I I really don't think that was Joe. Co- I mean, I know that was Joe Cocker. I. Can I see that? Can you let me see this record? Just hold it up so I can actually see. No. It, there's no mark. Uh, there's nothing that you can do right now to prove to me that that's Captain Beefheart. Uh, just you have to take my word for it. And obviously, by the vocal stylings, that's obviously Captain Beefheart. But that it's it, that it sounded because of the vocal stylings, it sounds nothing like Captain Beefheart. I and, I, and everything like uh, Joe Cocker. Well. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I can't I can't let you I I, I can't let you say I've already put the record up. Okay. Well, you know, Giles Palermo, I appreciate you coming down and uh playing some stuff from your uh your record collection and uh giving us a look into the into uh into your world and uh thanks nope. for coming up. I, I it was it was a pleasure, it really was. I, I enjoyed it. Well, I, I really did. And uh, next thank you, Tom, for having me on. Hopefully, maybe we can do it again sometime. Absolutely. Next time you're in the area, by all means, uh, bring bring more of your rarities. On. I, I hope that next time I'm I'm coming up, that everybody has something soft to sit in. I'm gonna I'm gonna knock everybody on their behinds next time I'm up here. Oh, uh, I look forward to that. Uh, I think you already did it tonight. Well, thank you. Ah, I should say you're listening to the best show on WFMU, on WFMU East Orange, WXHD, Mount Hope, worldwide on the World Wide Web at WFMU.org. My name is Tom Sharpling, and I'll be back next week at this time, hopefully, with uh, my normal voice. Stay tuned for Nickel and Dime Radio with the one and only Small Change coming up in now.